What's up, everyone? My name is Chris Marshall with my boy, Frank G. We are the hosts of Build the Empire Podcast. Frank G, tell the people what we do. What's going on, everybody? Chris and I, we discuss established empires while showcasing us building ours. Frank G, I'm extremely hyped. We've been doing this show about a year and a half. Uh, Back in 2018, I tried starting a YouTube series. My first guest was one of my great friends, Greg. Greg, welcome to the show. How are you? Welcome, buddy. What's going on? Thank you for having me. Um, of course, you know, we've been trying to set this up probably for a year. Uh, you know, I must say, I I know you since I was 17, 18 years old, one of the longer friends I have. Um, I always known you to be a straight up hustler entrepreneur. You're always doing 5 million things. Uh, mainly you're a DJ. You, uh, obviously own a, or we're going to get into it. Um, an event planning business. Uh, you're actually going to be doing my good friend's wedding. So we're going to get into that. Uh, Why don't you give us your story, give us uh, your origin, and let's roll. So my name is Greg Costa. I'm the owner of Unique Event Productions. We specialize in weddings, but we do everything uh, as far as event production, uh, photo booths, you know, and and such. Um, You know, I started DJing at the age of 16. So, I mean, the thing that's 13 years now, it's it's crazy. You know, it's that's that's all I know. Um, I worked for a couple companies and I kind of learned the whole business. I wanted to do something a little bit different. And that's where the unique name came from, you know, so it, we specialize in things that, you know, if you're looking to do something a little bit more creative, you know, we kind of mend, you know, your vision and make it a reality. Now, Greg, you, you run an event planning business. You're a DJ. What are you first? What do you say you are number one? Are you a business owner to Unique or are you a DJ? Are you DJ Costa? See, like, I don't know, my, my origin is like the DJing, but then like you evolve into a business owner because like you can't just stay a DJ, you know, because that's how the business operates. You, you know, you start thinking a little bit differently. So that's the next step you're saying to own the, the DJ business. That's how you elevate. A hundred percent. You know, it, it, the name of the game is just evolving, especially in the DJ industry. It's always what's next. You know, it started out as just music when I just started out mm. and then it became lighting, it became photo boots. And it, now it's this whole big production. So what, what do you what do you need to be a successful DJ? Uh, like, what do you I mean, not even I not even just running your own business, but what does a successful DJ need? What kind of skills? I would imagine good taste in music. Oh well, yeah, well that that's definitely you know the first thing, and and it's the love of what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So if you love what you're doing, you know you're gonna grow and you're gonna evolve as a DJ. You know, almost then, in anything. A hundred percent. But you're like hyping the crowd up. You're like getting everybody pumped. That's got to be yeah, exciting. So, so Greg, it's interesting because you have to read the crowd. No. Yeah, and you know every party is different. You know, one thing may go off in in one mm. party, and then you go to the next party, and it's like yeah, it's a little flat. What's that one banger you can always play though? Juicy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, that always goes with the hip hop crowd, you know. It does. At the, at, even, even like the younger kids love that. You know? At a wedding though, how many times you play the cha cha slide, and how many times? How, how much do you hate that song? <laughs> nah, I don't. I don't like that song. That's yeah, not, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not. I'm not, really I'm like not a bit. Yeah. Those like yeah, 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 those wedding dance that, songs. Like yeah. Cuban shovel. You know, <laughs> I feel like the Macarena is the only acceptable one. I don't know why. Uh, it's just I like, feel like the electric slide is better than the Macarena. I I probably suck at that one, so I'm not, <laughs> no, I know Greg, the Macarena. Greg, so I, I was never a dancer, so that wasn't you know like I remember like you know the kids that like I DJ with alongside you know, like they were dancers that became DJs. I was like, oh a, okay, you know, so maybe that's where I kind of differ. Greg, when you have a customer customer calls you up they want to do an event with you unique Mm -hmm. event right do they do you have a track list that you present to them do they tell you a track list like how are you creating the four hours of music so i mean obviously you have your expertise you know like what's going to work you know what you think is going to work you know and then you kind of go from there but you know we work with our clients so pretty much we give them a sheet we find out like the genres that they like more importantly, the genres that they don't like. So we know mm-hmm. like what to stay away from, you know, and then like those, those special songs. And like, what I think is a little bit different is we kind of try to like find out, like, say you put in, like, say you love juicy, 
right? Mm-hmm. Why do you love that song? You know, like because you can hit a nasty note. Yeah, I, but you had to go. <laughs> <laughs> but like, but like maybe like you know the the groom was in a club and Juicy was on and that's where he met his bride. You know, mm. so like we kind of try to take it to like the next. You find okay, yeah, yeah. You get oh, more, you get deep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 you know, I mean, a lot of people just think of like DJing as like, you know, you're just playing music or like you're making announcements, but so much more than that, especially at a wedding, because like you're literally, you know, playing their love song for yeah, four yeah. hours. You know, you're you're painting their story. So yeah, my cousin actually, I just went to a cousin's wedding and she told me she said she told the DJ absolutely no Ed Sheeran. Mm-hmm. If he came on, she would be the wedding would be ruined. That's literally what she told me. <laughs> and that's where like the creativity comes in because it's like, you know, sometimes like some DJs like know things that will work. Mm. And it's like you gotta move around, you know, those requests or those do not plays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, so that's where it kind of is like so Greg, okay. what is the most frequently asked artist, I guess, in today's era? in what you play uh, is it too hard of a question because there's so much music so it, it kind of varies because like sometimes you got the people that like you know like i know like pitbull was big for like a little bit you know he's sizzling out you know bruno mars was big you know sizzling out so it kind of goes in waves you have to keep up with the latest trends kind of 100 percent. yeah yeah People want what's new, what's popping. I mean, you also have to keep up with the latest trends and what's needed from an equipment standpoint at weddings, such as lights, visual, smoke, uh, you know, photo booths, which you have a lot of equipment to host on. Of course. And, you know, that's where it comes into like the always evolving because you never want to get left behind. You know, you always want to be like that, you know, that guy that, you know, if they're looking for something specific, you know, you could fill that void, mm. you know, I mean, I, I've done everything from, you know, dancing on the clouds, you know, snow, uh, you know, the snow, like, like coming from the ceiling down. Yeah. So it's like a, it's like a, a snow effect. Never seen that. Yeah. It was, uh, it was great. Um, we actually didn't offer at the time and, uh, you know, she was looking, she went to a wedding and I say it all the time, I was like, listen, if you guys want something, you know, let me know. I'll see if I can get it done. Right. She wanted for the first day and she wanted snow because it was a winter wedding. It was in February, you know, so we actually went out, you know, we educated ourselves in it and we went out, got some snow machines. And for the first day, she had dancing on the clouds. They had sparklers and then they had. Time out, Greg, time out. out. (laughs) You're telling me that your client wanted something and you went out and bought equipment to get that done. A hundred percent, because that's what we do. Like I said, we that's a great answer. <laughs> that's what we do. Like we don't, we're, we're not just DJs that play music. Like we, I, like I'm saying, I'm saying, like the love story. We're like Bob Ross. You know, we paint your picture for real. Nice reference there. <laughs> nice reference there, man. I mean, it, it. I mean, you're right though. That's nice to be honest, because you kind of don't you, get the reference. It, you know who Bob Ross is? Nah. Oh, yeah. what in the world? Well, that's why you don't get the reference. <laughs> Clearly, I feel like I'm I'm lost. Well, I mean, in the in the modern world, he's a meme and famous painting. He's sitting there painting painting something with like one of those. Uh, I tell you, either either half our audience really sides with me here, or they everyone. I well, if they're young, I, maybe not. I guess yeah. we'll see. <laughs> All guess. I'm saying is, you tell me what you want to be painted, and I paint it for you. You know that that's the name of the game that we're in. You know, Pleasing like, the customer. That's how it is everywhere, right? A hundred percent, you know, because it, it's not, it, it, we're really in a customer service, you know. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, you like you said, it, it's a wedding is probably one of the mo- most expensive events anyone will ever pay for in their lives. A hundred percent. You know, I was trying to counteract that just to play devil's advocate, but that probably is accurate. Yeah, that's why I said event, not like a home yeah. Uh, well, that that would probably be considered an event. Greg, I have to ask you this, because this is going to be great content here. Okay. Tell us the most awkward, embarrassing story of you in the business. Uh, most awkward, embarrassing. Doesn't have to be your <laughs> business. It could be you working for someone. I know you have. You have to have. I mean, if 
if the bride says don't play this, maybe it actually accidentally slipped up. Uh, you know, so actually I was doing... You see, you see I pulled it out, Frank. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it seems like in, in business, like you just try to make it like everything's all gravy, but you know, you have those those little hiccups. And I don't know, for me, it just stuck out. It was, you know, I was playing a mother uh, a song. It was just like I was getting in the game, you know? And it was... Uh, and young Greg. It was a small, a small wedding, maybe 50 people. Um, small hall, like a Knights of Columbus type of thing. Oh, you know? Not the type of mistake you want to make. Yeah. It, it, you know, <laughs> it I, makes I, sense I, in the I beginning was, of your career. Though. Yeah, <laughs> I was young. I was thrown out by one of the companies I was working for, you know. And it was just like, it was supposed to be like a nice sentimental, like mother-son type of dance. And it was like, it was Lone Star, uh, Amazed by You. And that's like, pretty much like very like an intimate like husband wife song so like at that point like i i just thought it was like a nice slow song that kid had to hate you oh man i had to pull that out of him yeah they they laughed it out you know and i was young they had no choice you were the asshole did they did they say something to you or just hit you like anything but you could just tell by looking at face, you know just the laughing but wait you didn't uh listen to the song prior I was very young. I, like I said, I started at 16. I was thrown into my first event at 17, the company I was working for. So okay. I only had a year experience and it wasn't, you know, anything, you know, insane, but that's, you know, where you get your, your expertise. Experience. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, you don't, you don't win, you don't, uh, you know, get the best wins from without losses. So, yep. um, Pressure creates diamonds. You're the one who told me that back in 2018. We were going to Hoboken while you did a set. Uh, um, so I do remember that. Uh, no diamonds. That's it. Yeah. Um, I got to ask you this, Greg. Uh, you know, obviously you evolve and you have to be passionate to evolve and to be consistent. Uh, I mean, Frank and I, we know that very well. Uh, so do you. Um, clearly, it seems essential for you to work in the business and then pick up all the cues to then create your own business. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about that journey? Uh, hold on. So get back to that point really quick. So pretty much the journey to what? To you owning your own business. How long did it take you to work for other people okay. to really understand the whole industry to be like, you know, I got this. See, like, that's the thing, though. Like, it's like you always think that you're good and it's always a learning curve because everything's constantly evolving, you know? So um, I worked for a company from 16 to 19, um, smaller company, and I got a lot of my DJ experience there. I went to another company uh, from 19 until 20. Three was when I started uh, Unique Event Productions. So that's where I learned more of like the MC work and somewhat of production, but they didn't do too much production. Um, but I, I did, you know, get my... Do you MC now or do you outsource it? So I primarily would like to be your DJ. Um, there's people that have heard me MC and they like my style of MCing. So they, I tell them either I could be your DJ or I, I could be your MC. I focus on just one, just because it's such an important aspect of your day, both of them, that I don't, I know that there's DJs that do do it. I do one or the other. So you choose if you want me as your MC or your DJ, that's it. You know, and if they I'm, said they want you as both, you would say, you would tell them this. Yeah. I mean, pretty much like, I think that, you know, it's, it's something that you really don't want to, uh, to really not like uh, I'm trying to think of the word that I'm looking for. Like, well, you're not trying to like shove it off as like a responsibility, but it's you want to make sure what you can do is, part, is like to or, the correct or exactly. overwhelm and to your, and to your best and dilute his product. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I could do it for like a, a smaller event. You know, you're not looking for more of like uh, you know, like first dances, introductions, everything like that. Because especially nowadays, what they're doing is for introductions. They're doing a, a song per uh, couple. Yeah, exactly. Where it used to be like the bridal party had one 
and then the parent you know parents had one they had one you know so you're playing three or four songs mm-hmm. so uh, right off the rip you're doing using 15 songs yeah and not, not saying that it can't be done you know but it has to be done correctly and you know the the room for error is so slight that you know it's a very expensive day i you know flipping back to the dj greg do you ever just go in your office or wherever you 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 know practice and do your sets and just fuck around and just you gotta no, yeah. you, you gotta watch your uh, headset we're crackling here <laughs> yeah of course i mean that's what you know you kind of get into it for is the love so i mean you always got to go back to your craft and kind of like test things out too because you don't want to be testing things out at a wedding no yeah that makes sense yeah you know like ah, i think this might work you know but i didn't really test it out you know and that's kind of like where you get like your like your recipes you know where it's like all right cool that worked out let me try that you know let me see if, if they'll go with this you know i liked it you know let me see if they like it you know Are you comfortable you try- right away doing that like right like just events in front of random people yeah i mean I've been doing it for so long. It, but you know, I, I guess it, if you may not even remember, but I'm sure at first it was probably nerve wracking. Kind of like public speaking. 100%. Yeah. I still have my, I remember the first time I ever emceed um, was an engagement party and I had to record it to send it to my boss. Like he kind of just like threw me out and was like, all right, record it and then we'll see how you do. You know, instead of like, uh-huh. I'm kind of like the opposite. I'm like, I want to see how you do first and then I'll send you out, you know? Like I'm more about like the, you know, the, the quality, but, um, yeah, I mean, you, you take that microphone and your hands like shaking and yeah. you, you know, you feel it in your voice and you know, that's, us, that's a big public speaking. Give us the story of when the crowd was the most turned up that like you were just, you felt godlike. <sighs> See, like I have a lot of weddings that are like that. So it's like, it's mm. kind of hard to like pinpoint just one. You know, like it sounds like once you reach a point, they're all the same. No, I mean, like there's you have different types of like people that it's like that. You know, you leave and you're like you're still ready to go. You're like, yo, I could go. You know, another hour. Another over hour. Time. Go to the club yeah. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but um, you know that that's the thing too, especially like post COVID. Like a lot of people are just ready to party. You know. Yeah. So, not saying that it's like. You know, like, I think they just have, like, that built-up energy that they're, like, you know, before it was, like, all right, you had six weddings, and, you know, they're coming, you know, as a guest, like, oh, I got to go this way. Well, you know, I would like, imagine that energy is coming back. I mean, with COVID, your particular industry got slaughtered, right? So now it's coming back around. I would imagine the excitement, you must see that. Oh, 100%. You know, you could just tell them, you know, guests are ready to go, you know, 15 minutes in yeah i mean i have two weddings in october or so like it they're happening you have dates yeah, thursdays mondays you know they're, they're all ready to go you may or may not i may hmm. why are you trying to come like sure nah, I, 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 I already have a plus one <laughs> so let me ask you greg what it seems you have a lot of things you like about djing is there something about the industry or whatever that you dislike oh man the setup and the breakdown <laughs> the setup and the <laughs> breakdown of an- it, it, <laughs> that makes it's, sense. it's long days man you know that you, makes sense with the uh you know a four-hour wedding but you don't see you know what goes into it you know because how much manpower of- is required it depends on the setup you know so i mean if you're talking like we had mirror photo boots you know that are large you know i mean they're a lot smaller than the old photo boots but they're still large you know tv screens tv uh custom made boots you know so i mean depending on the setup you have a large setup you know we're going from you know your dj mc and then an extra three four five guys depending so what's know. what's like the the back of the house look like is this all like stored in a warehouse in a house in like a van are you mobile usually you have your own car like van with it Right, so, got his own trailer. What happened? I said you got your own trailer. Own yeah, trailer cool. with the logo on it, huh? Yeah, oh, we still got to logo it up, but um, yeah, I mean, you know, we have you know our storage. You know, we actually right before COVID, we actually did a home office, which was kind of like a blessing, you know, okay. because 
we did a home office. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because now you're working. And home everything home. shut down. Yeah. You know, so so it was a, like a blessing in disguise. You know, and, and we're still kind of like teetering on some things. You know, so you know we're, we're taking a look. You know, to look open a, a new office, but I mean, we have everything covered from your office, your storage. You know, our now, trash. Greg, from a sales point, I would like mm -hmm. to think that you're one of my better friends mm -hmm. when it sells. Only because you annoy the shit out of me when it comes to football pools. <laughs> <bowls. laughs> Sometimes it's just a numbers game, and, you know? And it is a 100% numbers game, Always. and you understand that. But when it comes to this particular industry of, you know, event planning and production, a lot of it, I would imagine, has to be referrals. But there is marketing involved. What do you do? What exactly do you do to kind of target your demographic? So actually, tomorrow we actually have a wedding show. Uh, at the Southgate Manor. Uh, so we do a lot of uh, wedding shows. A lot of it is referrals. Um, we also do work with a lot of vendors. So, you know, we recommend vendors that we enjoy working with and then they do the same, you know, and we're lucky and fortunate enough to be uh, on a vendor list as far as event planners, photographers, um, and also venues. So it comes in from, you know, different avenues where we're able to, to meet clients, you know, I, through the years, you know, we're, we're in business for six years, you know, we've, we've grown us to that point. Um, it's just a very, like, it's a different sales uh, point of view because it's not like, a, you know, it, yeah, it's not like I'm going to show them when they, when they have a wedding. Well, you're building a relationship. Event. You're building a relationship. Well, yeah, exactly. You know, like we don't give you a, a, you know, a plastic bag that says, thank you, you know, giving you a receipt, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. a little bit different. It's, it's really like, like we keep in touch with our clients, like well after their wedding, of course. you know, you know, where they have us for their first birthday party, you know, their, their kids first birthdays, um, you know, growing into like all of their family moments, which is pretty cool because like you kind of see like your relationship evolve, you know, and you're interacting with them, especially through social media, um, they're interacting with you, you know, it, it's, it, it really is, you know, such a different sales approach. It, it, it really is. It's, it's a relationship. Yeah. Well, and, it does seem like mm -hmm. a business that's compounded by, by time. Frank, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. That, I, I agree with that. I mean, cause you're, like you said, word of mouth builds your, your service bills and ha builds and how well you do it is the word of mouth part. And why would people not refer you? Didn't you say yourself that he's doing a friend's wedding? I don't know. I'm assuming you may have referred him. Yes, correct. Uh, there yeah. you go. That's how that works. Greg, you'll do no. my wedding, pal. Sounds <laughs> <laughs> good. So I'm not running away. I'm there. Maybe sooner than you think. Frank, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. <laughs> waiting for it. <laughs> Greg, would you? I'm going to throw, um, what would you rather do here? Would you rather do a, a 400 person wedding off your company? Or would you rather DJ like a nightclub and have like a set? So I, I actually do both. Um, I know you I do work. both, but which one would you choose if you had the option? And like, let's See, leave money out of the equation. No, I know. Um, so it, it depends because like you get to just have those like crazy like wedding, you know, parties. That's like a club. You know, Weddings, are Weddings are great. Weddings are great. Yeah, weddings become like it could be expensive, but they're great. To, I, I like to like a club. You take your laptop, you go in, and then you're feeling out the entire room, and you're you're creating that vibe with music. Um, with weddings, okay. you're doing it, you know, with with, with and there's the, and there's and family, family, friends, yeah. like the closest yeah. of people around. I kind of I choose the wedding, you know, industry over the mm. nightlife. That's just me. Well, mm -hmm. it's fascinating because uh, I'm just beginning to learn that the nightlife industry and DJs, there's like obviously rules within the industry where, you know, somebody who goes, you know, the first DJ, his set can't be like songs within two years that just came out. Right. Is, isn't that how that kind of works? Like you have to play older shit. Well, I mean, no, not necessarily, but you don't want to step on like the the openers i mean the um the main event the closer, yeah. yeah and you don't that's you don't true. really you want the crowd to be popping yeah, before well I, yeah, I mean that sucks for that yeah, i mean you you want to set the vibe so i mean don't get the crowd too hyped up 
Now, well, I mean, you want to lead it to that, you know, yeah, you want yeah, to have that the big away. entrance, like exactly. And that, that's where, like, working with other DJs, like, it also puts you in a different perspective because, like, you're kind of like going through your mindset and it's like all right cool i'm looking for this type of vibe what am i going to play here and how am i going to introduce the headliner without playing something that you know he's going to play so it's 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 teamwork right and knowledge so it's it's, it's ironic and funny because i've seen some of the best djs in the world dj and i was so drunk i would ask my friend when they're coming on and it's already <laughs> passed they, they left they came on <laughs> left. I had no clue. Well, so, I mean, some of them were on. Some people were on for like twenty minutes. I feel like uh, maybe that was just DJ Khaled that one time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes, <laughs> you know, sometimes you vibe with the the opener and the closer a little bit, you know. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I mean, that's too, because they're playing that mm-hmm. right, you know, that right turn music that you wouldn't expect, and all of a sudden, you know, like, hey, a a, a club version of, uh, you know. Mr. Brightside just came on and you're feeling it, you know, and oh, you're going back that. to like, you know, back when you were a kid mm-hmm. and you're like, oh shit, you know? Yeah, I want I f- Drake. I feel that one. <laughs> you watch Drake. How much Drake do you play? Uh, Drake's- it's got to be a ton. He's the most Drake's popular Drake. man in the world. Greg, Frank wants to be Drake. In fact, Frank, ask Greg that question. Who would he beat up? <laughs> All right. Um, so, if you could change lives with one person, who would it be? But you have to beat them up. Or actually, you pretty much have to kill them. You have to be able to. Oh, because, yeah. like, from, like, a DJ standpoint, like. Oh, Jazzy that makes Jeff, sense. Like, I, I, Go after Steve Aoki. No, no. no. <laughs> Jazzy Jeff. Jazzy Jeff. Oh, Jazzy he's frail. Jeff. He's frail. Uh, well, well, I'm, I'm, I'm legend, though. I'm curious if that's why he said it, though, because you could easily beat him up. Like, I'm thinking Drake, but Drake's 200 pounds, like. And wait a second, Greg. Do you really want to be Jazzy Jeff? He's not exactly in his front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's okay, because he'll <laughs> obliterate any DJ right All right, now. I, I, I've seen him live. He's insane. And this was, like, two years ago. You could tell you love the DJ game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, like, love Justin Bieber, but I chose Justin Bieber. I, I chose Joe Biden. Yeah. I, think it, I think it'll be an easy win. Yeah, he'd be nah, he'd not even gonna get to it. Yeah, I don't want to yeah. be him. I wouldn't remember where I'm at right now. That is probably true. I tell you though, if you were him, you could definitely do a set to all of America. That sure. is a fact. If you were to play one song for like an outro, what would you play? The last song type of thing for this for context of this show for this podcast. Uh, so like, I can see like some like Jay Z vibes in out of here, like you know, like a little like uh, like millionaire billionaire type of vibe on the way out. I'm bumping, oh, I'm bumping right I now, just in case we add the music. Woo. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. You know, a little cinematic on the way out. Oh, I like that. Like oh, uh, Greg, Greg knows. I'm, the crowd. I'm, all, I'm all about the story. That's it. You know, he I knows I the crowd too. He knows the crowd. Yeah, th- you know, there's no cookie cutter. You got to see how everything is. Greg, when are you gonna have another polka night? Oh man, we got to do it on a Friday when I'm things kind of like slow down because the business is booming right now. You know, everything's. That's well, I thing. mean, that's good to hear. You also have like four jobs. I mean, like I said earlier. You hustle almost more than anyone I know. Um, uh, for anyone listening, Greg hosts poker nights, and uh, he purposely gets people drunk to take their <laughs> money. I know his game. I know um, his game. I think I I'm never the big winner. Hundred percent. I have to say, since we were talking about poker, I was a big winner once. See, I was once. a big winner. I, I, was, I big was only there once. You were there probably twice. I guess I got too drunk that first time. I don't remember. Hey, Greg took your money. <laughs> it was me. Like Shaggy said, it wasn't me. It wasn't uh, me. <laughs> how often do you play that? Oh, that's a so good like, one, though. That is yeah, a good one. I tend to do this thing where it's like, all right, if it kind of like sneaks in. You already in, do it. I like it. I'm gonna, <laughs> He's doing you know? it. You, you got to have some like personal enjoyment, too. You know? Oh, of course, man. You got fun. 
I gotta be honest. I feel like at a a wedding event, Angel would be more of a song than it wasn't me. Uh, I used to be yeah, like my exactly. you know, like like go to type of thing. You know, I kind of like I haven't really played it that much now, but well, it was me go tos. Well, oh yeah, it wasn't sure. me like a, a the younger crowd even knows that. So that's where it's like it's boom. also technically it's about like cheating. Yeah. So like I don't know how who wants that at their wedding but it is a good banger no uh, i don't really play it at like weddings i'll play it at like different events yeah like, yeah, yeah. like a like a club bar type of thing you know like a little opening set that makes more sense he See, very nicely subtly was like ah, i don't play that one at weddings when you're crazy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, you, you try to like stay away from like the stuff that's like you know like Cheating. <laughs> you want to stay with or, like the love, or know? where, or where a mom you and know? dad are like romantic. A mom and a son are romantically dancing to a, a song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be. you know, I, I learned my lesson at the age of yeah. sixteen. Not yeah. to tell you I tell you, the fact that you even had that gig and position at the age of seventeen, sixteen, um, yeah. is already kind of, kind of awesome. I mean, who, who the fuck is doing that at sixteen, seventeen? To, to be honest, ironically, I also had a friend in high school. I mean, maybe you know him, Steve Cal Shone, uh, DJ. But he just got into it. We we did a music thing for like in tenth grade, and this kid just took off. He's like, I'm gonna MC now. Like we did a little event in the classroom, and he just became an MC DJ. You were involved. I was in the event. I didn't do anything afterwards. What did what role did you play? You model. You wear a suit. So you, oh, and you like oh, walk God. down the runway. In fact, I was a model once and I had to do this in my marketing club to get an internship. My marketing professor was like, do you know a DJ? I was like, matter of fact, I do. I got Greg. He did the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> Just, right. Greg, do you remember what song I played? I walked out to? I remember I, somehow. I, I do you? All the lights. Flash and light. Flash and light. Funny, bro. <laughs> Pleasure yeah, lights. I knew it was so with lights. That's just funny, man. That's you know just... what? Greg got me an internship, which led us to Gerald, which uh, I guess led me into sales. That's an, another great thing that I guess is one of the last things we're going to tell the people in this episode. You've been, you and Greg, been through a lot. Uh, Greg and I has been through a lot. Um, Greg, I, I appreciate you. I appreciate our friendship. Uh, I can't wait to see where it goes. Um, uh, hopefully, I have you at my wedding, and you're gonna rock out. Um, I guess it's gonna be sooner or later. To <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, should be Frank, a good you time. Anything else to say? <clears throat> I mean, uh, I just—it's always a good conversation with you, man. I, I appreciate you coming on. If I, I don't have—I don't have a wedding coming up for myself so i can't invite you to, to dj it yet that's yeah. right frank usually talks to like 13 women <laughs> you never I, know how many i mean like, i appreciate you thinking that highly or, or that skilled of me to be able yeah, to talk to 13 own penis <laughs> <It's> one <laughs> <of the other. laughs> hey where's frank he's just walking around with uh his arms like this that's my boy <laughs> no, no, don't boost his ego greg we're gonna, we're gonna ride out we're gonna ride out we're gonna put this jay-z song on and we're gonna ride out greg it's always a pleasure i hope to link up with you soon man yeah, thank you guys for having me i really appreciate it yes sir okay. of course buddy peace and love